All right, so we're back at work after the holidays. We walk right into this long to-do list. Of course, lots of emails, phone messages to return. It might seem impossible to kind of get a handle on all that, but it is not. Jason Womack wrote the book. It's called Your Best Just Got Better, Work Smarter, Think Bigger, Make More. Has some advice for us this afternoon on how we can all work smarter in the new year. He joins us to talk about it. Thanks for being with us. Absolute pleasure. Thank what you. Do Happy I do new first? Year. Yeah, Happy <laughs> New Year to you. I, I guess that's kind of good news, bad news, depending on how you look at it. So what do I do first to get you know, my the, job in order? The first thing I take a look at is most people think their productive day starts in the morning on their way to work and the morning commute. I actually coach them to start their productive day today, yesterday. So at the end of the day today, actually stop and think about what would a successful tomorrow look like? And I've actually got clients doing this on a Friday. What would a successful Saturday look like? And that's where we get to the making more part of the book. So do you advocate doing some things at home, checking e work emails at home, keeping up on your BlackBerry, things like that? That's such a specific to job question, <laughs> right? I mean, if something goes by me and I need to be in that in the know, then I will have people who check their Blackberries or their iPhones with email. Uh, but really for me, it's the approach to that, the thinking about that. Is there anything we can do with future thinking? For example, one of the things that people are doing is they're putting it out of office when they get back to the office. Hmm? Now you think about that and you say, well, wait a minute, Jason, I'm back. Well, what I do is when we come back from that vacation, let people know I've come back, I've been away for a few days or a week. It's going to take me a little bit of time to catch up. Hmm. You also say that you should prioritize when we come back. Well, everyone's trying to get the most important things done. And that really goes back to that point that I made a little bit earlier. As I end the day today, I might pick one or two of my MITs, my most important things for tomorrow. And it's not like this is the only thing I do tomorrow. These are the big ones. And then I have clients cycle through those in a week. So of the 15 or 20 MITs that most of us have, I might be able to get to 10 or 15 of those per week cycling through those on a regular basis. So you talk about looking ahead to tomorrow or to Monday. Is it also important to look even further ahead, like weeks, months, even a year in advance, what we want to accomplish? Boy, do we have the opportunity to do that right now. With the coming of the new year, everyone around us will accept that we're making goals or accept that we're about to make some changes. And this is the time to get that support. It really, again, depends on what you're looking towards. For some people, 90 days out is a lifetime. Mm -hmm. For other folks, that is just right around the corner. So that's kind of one of those that I have to balance between the two. And one of the things you suggest is uh, taking technology shortcuts. Does that give me a chance to use some of my gadgets? Is that what you're talking about? Well, you know, it's one of those things where it's supposed to make life easier. And if I think back to the things that technology does that some people either forgot or don't use as much, as simple as a speed key to dial someone's phone number a long time ago, there are things that email can do or other systems can do that facilitate moving through work faster. In the book, you also talk about something you call bonus time. What is bonus time? Bonus time happens all the time. It's those moments where a meeting starts a little bit late or ends a little bit early. Uh, there's little traffic, and I get somewhere. That actually happened just this morning. I got <laughs> really? here a little bit ahead of time, <laughs> and I was able to do a couple of things. And in the book, I tell about what happened one time when I arrived on time, but my client was 15 minutes late and actually list out what I was able to do in those 15 minutes because I was ready. I had a few things ready to do in that bonus time. And breaking inertia, what is that? How do I do that? Well, a body in motion tends to stay in motion. Uh, a body stopped tends to stay stopped. So on either side, you know, one of the things we talk a lot about is habits and forming habits. A lot of people talk about breaking habits or changing them. And what I like to take a look at is the inertia of a habit in motion, I change that by replacing that habit with something different. If email is the first thing that I check in the morning, for five mornings, perhaps I make a inventory of things to tell my boss before I start the day. Perhaps I look at some materials that I've been waiting until I had that bonus time to look at. And then I can start to replace those habits with what I've got, maybe even making a better one. All right. It's a good time to start. Jason, thanks for your insight. Thanks, Jason. Thank you.